Hi guys, welcome to my house. This is a one and a half story home in Toronto, Canada. I live here with my husband, Austin, and my dog, Danny. Come on in. All right, welcome to my kitchen. Uh, this is one of the spaces that I redid the most recently. I wanted the space to feel really bright and airy before it was mostly a dark wood kitchen. A lot of the rest of my house draws on mid-century and kind of 70s retro design, but with this space, I wanted it to be a little more timeless. So I went with some bright neutrals just because a kitchen reno is something that's not easy to redo on like painting a wall in your house. So I wanted to make sure this was pretty timeless in here. On this wall, I have a paper roller. This is by a New Zealand company called George and Willie. Usually this has a calendar of everything going on in our lives, just so Austin and I are on the same page. But for you guys, it's empty because I'm keeping that secret. <laughs> this bank of cabinets was something I added. It was not here in the original kitchen, um, but this space was empty space without it. So I think it works a lot better like this. This lamp is definitely a DIY project. The bottom was just a vase that I thought was too cool to be left as a vase on its own. So I added the lamp part to it and now it's this really cool table lamp. The original kitchen had this small glass and stainless steel range hood above um, the stove here, but I thought it looked a little small in the space. So what I did was enclose the whole thing in this black lime wash hood and I think it just makes the space feel much more grand. The countertops are original to what was here when I bought the house, but the backsplash was something I did all on my own, um, retiled it all in this really nice kind of overgrouted stone. I think it just works so much better with the existing countertop and again, makes it feel bright and airy in here. Over on this wall, this was just a blank wall that closed in the fridge before, but I decided to add these little wall shelves that were again, a DIY project and I think it just makes really good use of what was kind of dead space before and it now holds things like cutting boards and cookbooks um, and oven mitts. So that's it for my kitchen. Now let's head into my living room. This is our living room. This is where we spend most of our time hanging out. Over here on this wall is all of our records. We are big music people in this house, so we love to have all of these here. This Live Edge shelf was actually made by myself and Austin. He milled the wood, and then I made it into this floating shelf here. This piano actually has a really cool story. I picked it up off the front porch of one of the few frat houses in Toronto. They had said that a music student had brought it, and then they didn't know what to do with it. So they said, if I could figure out how to move it, I could have it. So I hired a piano mover and then they brought it here. This is actually a Toronto made piano as well, which I do think is super cool. I used to play piano. I am slowly getting back into it um, and it's helpful to have this. Been getting into Queen recently. <laughs> We like to host a lot, so having a big L-shaped couch was very important to me. This one not only looks great, but it does seat a lot of people. This side table here was handmade by me. It's all made out of sheets of ply, and it was custom made to fit all of these different design books that I have. I just think that it was a great way to show off the books that I do have. It's kind of like a mix of a bookshelf meets side table. It's a really great statement piece. This coffee table we've had for a while. It's a West Elm piece and I love it so much because it's a lift off coffee table. I don't have a designated really office space in this house, so I do a lot of work from here. We also eat meals here sometimes. It's great to have the combo of coffee table plus also tabletop surface. Up here we have the disco ball. I, I love it paired with the heavy curtains. It just gives me like retro concert vibes, which I just I love. Another cool thing about my house is a lot of it runs off of Google even the disco ball so we can say turn on my disco ball and especially at night it looks much better at night we can have an instant party happening in here in this corner we have my vintage electric fireplace this is hands down my favorite thing in the entire house if the house was on fire and i could only take one thing it would literally be the fireplace i don't know how though because it's quite heavy but this was another kijiji find which is like canadian craigslist um, I think the seller was not aware of the value of it because I got it at a really great price and these things typically go for like thousands of dollars. Although it is just electric, I like having the glow of it and it feels like a real fire. I have this running basically every day and definitely every night. 
these speakers that are on either side of my TV are one of my best thrift finds ever. I actually got them at a local thrift shop when we were up shooting an episode of Upgrade My Stay, and they were under $10 for the pair of them. So I had to bring them home, and now they live on either side of my TV, which the TV is quite modern, so I think these things help blend with the retro feel of my home. Um, down here we have the record player. This was actually my mom's from her first home, so I think it's pretty cool that it got passed on to me. This little record stand that you know tells us what's playing was made by Nick, one of my editors for Secret Santa this year, and I love it so much. A lot of people ask me what is on this big film wheel that I have here, and I actually don't know. I would love one day to hook it up to a projector and find out myself, but this was a gift given to me because I did go to film school and it's a pretty cool homage to my education. <laughs> Back here is what I guess you could call our formal dining room. I actually never envisioned having a big table back here when we first moved in, just because it's quite a small nook here. But when I found out I was hosting Thanksgiving one year and realized I had no actual table for anyone to sit, I had to get this one in a pinch. This came off of Marketplace. Again, a very last minute decision, but I actually love it so much. I think a glass tabletop is exactly what was needed back here because it's clear, it doesn't take up a lot of visual space, but it does seat a lot of people. Another great advantage of the tabletop being clear is that you can see directly below it onto this amazing tufted rug. This is by an artist called Lindsay Deegan. I actually purchased this rug off of a subscriber. It was very, very sweet. She was so nice. Um, you would actually think that would happen more often considering how much I'm on Marketplace, but it doesn't. <laughs> On the wall, we have some of my favorite art. This is a rendering of the Unity Temple designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. As you guys can maybe tell, I'm a big fan of mid-century design and he is an iconic designer. And over here, my husband works with engines, so we have a vintage ad for an old Toro lawnmower, which I do think is really cool. Speaking of Austin, these guitars are all played by him. I wish I could play even half as well as he does. Back here is a storage closet, but this door was actually another marketplace find. It was originally bright green and the paint was all peeling, but I refinished the whole thing, painted it black, added it to this sliding door hardware. And I think I turned this little storage closet corner into much more of a statement piece. It's actually a shame more people don't see it because it is tucked away back here, but I absolutely love it. I wouldn't really say I collect anything necessarily, except for when it comes to my dog. I find it really hard to find any Border Collie related things that aren't in the typical black and white colorway. So whenever I see a red and white Collie that looks like Danny, I add it to the collection and I just like it's so cute. I'm gonna take you guys upstairs, but on our way, this is my back hallway. We have a great photo of the DeLorean on Mars. Back here is my washroom. I kept it pretty neutral and just clean in here. One fun thing we did was make another floating live edge shelf here that mimics the one that the records are on. Behind me is the doorway into our backyard. I DIY'd this really great big circular fire pit area where we can have great bonfires and host a lot of people around it. It honestly looks even better at nighttime in my opinion. Okay, let's head upstairs. This staircase had such a big blank white wall that I wanted to do something really fun here. So we did this massive gallery wall Basically, the category is just things that make me in Austin happy. It's a collection of just a whole bunch of different things. For example, this little art print here, Don't Fret My Pet. Um, my grandma would always call me her pet, so that's for her. Um, this is a ticket from when I saw Tragically Hip at House of Blues. This is a signed print of Kesha. I love her. Got an Ozzy Osbourne album because Austin loves Ozzy. This is a really cool art print of lyrics from a Beach Boys song. This one played at our wedding. This tri-pendant light here is another DIY project. I thrifted each one of these shades separately, um, but realized they all looked cool together, so I wired them all to be one giant chandelier that lights this hallway really nicely. Into the primary. This is our primary bedroom. This is, I think, my favorite spot in the house. I just love to hang out in here. Um, while the rest of the house has some funky colors here and there and more of a retro vibe, I did want to keep this room very neutral just to really add to that relaxation vibe in here, kind of hotel-esque spa vibes. 
This bed is a king size bed. Yes, it takes up almost the whole room, but you spend so much time sleeping that for me it was worth it to invest in a really amazing bed. This I think is the most expensive thing in this whole house. The bed frame itself is from CB2 and the mattress is a posturepedic, but it is so comfortable. When I go away on vacation, all I do is miss my own bed because it's the most comfortable bed I've ever slept in. <laughs> This piece of art I had commissioned by an artist named Siray. She does amazing line work drawings and I love just how simple this is, but yet you can tell that it's people in embrace. It's very sweet. Over in this corner, we have the fireplace slash TV wall. This little chair here was an upcycle project that I did. Um, it really completes this corner that was kind of missing something. Above it is this really great retro 70s light. I bought it off of Marketplace from a woman who said it did not work. So she was selling it, um, but all it was missing was two wires that had been disconnected. So took that home, fixed it up, and now it lives here. The fireplace insert itself was another marketplace find, but the whole surround to it I built myself. I really wanted to go for this kind of plastered adobe house style vibe with it, um, and then I painted it all white. The TV itself is actually quite an older model of TV, but I wanted to keep it because it did work fine. But what I ended up doing was just DIYing this kind of frame for it, which matches the wall color behind, and I think it really made it fit with this whole wall here. Over here across the hall is the second bedroom upstairs. We didn't really need this space, so I kind of took it over as my giant walk-in closet. Every good closet needs a mirror. This is one of the first Kijiji purchases I've ever made. It's a massive four foot by four foot mirror. Um, I paid Austin and his friends in dinner and drinks to help me move it here, but I absolutely love it and I think it makes the space feel even bigger. This was the first room that I feel like I really went full 70s mid-century with it. So we have the Togo chair and ottoman here. The design of this shelf was inspired by the Paul Kidovius modular teak shelf system. I really loved that one, but finding them vintage is a really high price tag, so I thought I could try and DIY it myself. It houses all of my shoes and bags, as well as an amazing martini lamp by David Chris. I'm a huge sucker for really cool lamps and chairs, so I've got a bunch of cool lamps around my house, and this one I think is my favorite. Speaking of really cool lighting, we have up here a mid-century staple. This is the Hay Lighting Paper Shade Pendant. Um, I would be lying if I say it doesn't get in the way sometimes, but it's just so beautiful that I don't mind the space that it takes up in here. Over here we have basically my closet. This is an Ikea hack. I took two Ikea drawer units and then put these drawer fronts on it to look kind of like an 80s giant filing cabinet and I think it turned out amazing. Okay, I've shown you guys all of the upstairs. I think it's now time to show you what's in my basement. Welcome to my basement. Besides housing our laundry down here, this is really kind of like the guest quarters. We have lots of sleeping spots down here for when we have people over. One of them, being out here in the main part of the basement. We really haven't done a lot in terms of reno to the basement. I mean, the paint color and the wallpaper behind me is original to when we bought the house, um, but I did my best to make it homey down here. This bed is very comfortable in my opinion. Up here on the wall are a set of photos that I found at my local thrift store and I absolutely love them. This side table is a creation by Austin and I think it's really cool as well. But the real star of the show in terms of guest bedrooms is actually through this door over here. This guest bedroom definitely takes you to a whole nother vibe in my opinion. The concept for this room came about when I was doing a design challenge where I challenged my friends to pick out different elements of the room and then I had to piece them together in what I think is a pretty cohesive design. For example, this really funky wallpaper was chosen by Amanda Rachel Lee and this amazing wall sconce was chosen by my friend Molly Burke. I think for being a basement and a smaller room, I really nailed the cozy vibes with going with this kind of like darker rust brown color. I've been told by guests that when they're down here, they just want to sleep and cuddle in and be here all day. And that's a win for me as a host. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed my home. I would be curious to know what your favorite part of it is. But until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.